What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dennis Invest podcast, where I am joined, and it is my pleasure to host returning face, Tony Hammond. How are you, Tony? Hey, James, I'm fantastic. Thank you on this gorgeous day in sunny Yorkshire. Oh, wunderbar. <laughs> Always sunny in sunny Yorkshire, I hear. Of course it is. Uh, yes. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, Tony. So we're returning face, and obviously we've covered everything and everything, uh, anything and everything, uh, life insurance um, and... Uh, income protection up until this point. And what we wanted to do was just revisit the income protection side of things to give dentists a little bit more value on that area because we kind of left a few stones unturned on that one, didn't we? There's a few loose ends to tie up. So that'll be something interesting to do today and something I've been looking forward to. Yeah, can't wait. Really looking forward to it. And uh, thanks for having me back again. Um, we've got you know, a lot of interest from it. Uh, and as you said, you know, really to come in at a slightly different angle because um, it's, it's a... It, it's one of the things that I'm most passionate about of all of the, the solutions that we provide for customers. Um, income protection, I think, is really the number one because statistically it's what people are most likely to claim for. Uh, and yet it's so undervalued and under, well, not undervalued necessarily, but undersold. Um, so, yeah, it, for me, it's the number one and I think people should have. And um, so, you, as I say, I've been on here a few times now, and as you'll know, my sort of strap line is that we provide a financial safety net, and everything that we do is underpinned by that. And I think, as I say, income protection um, is one of the most important um, strands of that. And I was thinking that this, believe it or not, I think is similar to dentistry in a way. That is that prevention is better than cure. Um, I know there's been lots of stuff in the press about children not getting access to dentists and things like that and, and on oral health. But I think if you on the insurance side, well, how can prevention better be better than cure? But with with a lot of the providers of income protection, you don't have to be really poorly and off work to benefit from some of the added value services they, they have. So, for example, um, especially in dentistry, as you'll know, is that um, mental health is a key issue. With a lot of dentists, I think oh, they're, yeah. they're, um, they're more liable to it than a lot of other industries. But you can access counselling, uh, including CBT therapies and things like that. So it's and physiotherapy, you can get um, remote physiotherapy, things like that. So before you're really off work, if you know you're going down the wrong path, there's help to keep you at work. And that's all part of the value that a lot of these providers offer for you. And that there are some that will look at what healthy choices that you're making there and dependent on the client. Some really like to get involved in these things where you get an annual health check. You'll look at your physical activity and sort of points make prizes and things like that. Um, so dependent on the client, there's lots of different options to do. So it's not just kicking in when you're off sick. There are lots of other things that can get you uh, to stay at work, which is clearly what everybody wants at the end of the day. Oh, that's so that prevention the whole, is still better than cure. Yeah, whole um, different vantage point to life insurance is basically when it kicks in when you yeah. start working. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, interesting. Does, yeah, absolutely on that side of things. And then we've been talking about a lot of your clients will be uh, dentists, business owners on that side of things. Um, well, it depends on the type of structure of the business. Will depend on will depend on which type of income protection that is probably more is, is better for you. So for the sole traders out there, and there's a lot of those dentists, isn't there, that are sole traders, they haven't, they don't want for whatever reason or haven't got to yet, a limited company. I've spoken to a lot of dentists that have both. They have a sole trader business um, and a limited company. Sole trader may be the NHS side of things and a limited company may be uh, the private. Um, but regardless of that, the... Um, for the sole trader, they can't access the executive income protection. And I think it was the podcast before last, we went into a lot of detail about that, where you can put your own income protection through the business. It's like putting it on expenses. And I think we did that in a lot of detail, but um, mm -hmm. that's certainly, but for sole traders, that's not possible because you need that um, employer employee relationship. And if you're a sole trader, you don't have that. So sole trader dentist, what they would be looking at is uh, having an income protection policy in their own name. Um, so it protects your salary when you need it most. Um, so, you know, as I said before, you can never prepare yourself for an illness that puts you out of work, but you can put the right cover in place should you ever need it. So if you get sick or injured and need to take time off work, that's where the income protection comes in. It pays out 
part of your, your monthly income. And this is taxable income, um, helping you protect your finances while you recover. Uh, because, because you don't pay tax on your monthly payments, uh, it can replace most of your salary as well. And so this is having it in their own name. So it's setting up your own sick pay or more recently, everybody will be aware during COVID about having a furlough scheme uh, Well, this is setting up your own furlough scheme, if you like. So it's there should you need it. Now, again, I'm repeating myself some previous podcasts, but things that we've talked about are that, you know, if you've got a, a car in the drive or the garage, you have to insure that. Uh, if you've got a house, you have. If you've got a mortgage, rather, you have to insure that as part of the mortgage. Uh, uh, um, you've got to get that as part of your mortgage agreement. You could have insurance for your phone, for your dog. This is about insuring you. You know, if you've got a machine in your room that's printing out your salary every every month, you'd be insuring that, wouldn't you? And that's exactly what this is doing. So if you can't work for any reason, so through sickness. Uh, or accident or disability, um, then this will pay out. Um, so it's that peace of mind that we're talking about, that financial safety net if something happens. And we all think it won't happen to us, don't we? But we'll all know happened people. To me. Happened, yeah. That happened to me, right, with yeah. my knee, but I'm not going to repeat that story because everybody on the podcast is bored of hearing okay, right. now. People are going to stop listening. Right. <laughs> but, okay. but it did. I thought I was invincible. I thought... That'll never happen to me. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, this could it could be something, um, but also something more serious like cancer. We all know somebody that's been affected by cancer. And if you can't work for that, this is going to pay you out on a monthly basis. Uh, it's going to take the pressure off. So clinically, I think it's been proven that if you haven't got the financial burden, it helps you get better more quickly. I think common sense states that, doesn't it? So um, and so. The income protection is when you can't work for any reason. Where people have heard about critical illness policies, where you have to have a specified illness. This isn't that. This is if you're if you can't work for any reason, including mental health. So there's that financial safety net for you there. Uh, typically, you can get up to about sixty percent of your taxable income, uh, and that's that will pay out until you return to work, or you reach the end of, of the. Um, at the, the end of the term of, of your uh, of your type of policy. And just to, sorry to jump in, just to define taxable income, that's the income that we're taxed on in our personal name, right? So div dividends and income tax, right? Yeah, so it's what would be on your tax calculation at the end of the year. Um, so you do a self-assessment um, uh, that um, HMRC would then look at. So that includes salary. Most... Most businesses, if they're limited, will have a small salary, take the rest in dividends. Yeah. And all of that's covered. Clearly, if you're a sole trader, you won't be having that. So that's just that's on your income. So anything that you're paying tax on, this pays out. Yes. Yes. On that, so, on that element of it. Not not the funds in the limited company that are liable to corporation tax, not those. Well, the thing is, no. So um no, no, it's it's good. No, I, I was just I was just confirming as well. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's so I, I think just, that in terms for of me, the, the sort of the term income protection sort of does what it says on the tin. This is your income, right. this is your right. taxable yeah. income. Yeah. But what it will do if we do put it through the business, so we're moving on uh, from the sole trader benefit. Um, if you do have your own limited company, you can put it through the business and offset that against tax. So you reduce your corporation tax. On that one if you remember so that's the executive yeah. income protection that we talked about in a lot of detail I, I think probably we don't need to go into that depth of that today but sole traders have it in your personal name um limited company directors a lot of dentists that i'm speaking to that they're the they have their own limited company and they're the only director but because the limited company is the structure you can you've got that employee employer relationship there so the so you can offset it against tax which is really key um, and you can put more through that business. You can get up to 80% of that and include national insurance and pension contributions are all options available to you. But I say we've done that in a lot of detail that people can probably look at the previous podcast if they want more, or of course, give me a call. The other area um, that to, to mention on, on the personal sides before I move on is that there's some, uh, I was just getting to the point where 
most clients will take it until their state retirement age or when they want to retire. I know a lot of dentists that I'm speaking to don't want to wait till they're 67 before they retire. They may have a goal of 55 or whatever it may be. So you can have the, the income protection that's going to pay out until that point. But sometimes if, if budget is an issue, maybe in the early days of a career, whatever it may be, then people can take out a budget version of income protection where it will, once they're once they're claiming, um, it will pay them out for either a year, typically two or five. Um, but ideally, you want to get them to it in, until their their retirement age. That's where that's where you want to get to. Um, but there's other things involved. Just very quickly, um, there's a um, fracture cover with a lot of providers. So you know, if you if you break your wrist or your arm, they'll pay you a lump sum uh, for that in addition. Uh, to be enough work with it as well uh, and also if your child god forbid is is poorly uh, with a specified illness it will also pay i think it's up to six times what your income would be what your, your payment would be so you can spend time with your child so there's all these other added benefits um and whilst i'm on the t the uh, the subject of benefits don't forget that a lot of these policies uh, which we've touched on before, but will provide access to being able to speak to a British GP 24-7, wherever you are in the world. Uh, you can get a second opinion if something's gone wrong. You want to go, and, uh, go to the best consultant in that particular area that will, will check the diagnosis and the treatment. Um, I already mentioned about remote physiotherapy, the psychological services and things like that. So that's all part of the package with most providers nowadays. So that, that's... Um, I think those on their own are worth the weight in gold. Um, and then the bit that I haven't got onto yet, uh, which a lot of the people that are listening may not be aware of, is for those that own the business and have staff, you can put income protection in for your for your staff members. Um, so it's called group protection. So typically two or above, uh, you can have group protection in place. The really sexy thing about this. Well, quite a lot, but if, I'm a bit sad. I think those things are, <laughs> are really clever. Is that you can um, decide who you want to be covered. So it doesn't have to be everybody. You could have different levels of cover for the different members of staff. So you could have a different level of cover for your associate dentists, yourselves, your practice manager, and you maybe have a different level of cover for um, receptionists, for example. So you decide where it's at. But it's, the, the bit that's good about this is that um, the vast majority of it, there isn't any medical underwriting because it's under a group policy. So there are some people out there that wouldn't necessarily be able to get income protection in their own name because they may have, um, I don't know, they may have had cancer before and recovered, something like that, where this, you don't have to declare it. Uh, there's no medical underwriting up to a certain level. So anybody that joins, let's say you've got 10 members of staff. Um, and as we all know, especially in the dental world, trying to get good staff. I've been speaking to dentists this week that struggle to get good dental nurses uh, to stay attract in the first place. It's these types of benefits that we've talked about. You know, we've talked about life insurance, but you can give them income protection as well. So you don't want paying staff and then them being off sick for ages. Where if you've got this sort of uh, this type of policy in place, not only does the business pay for it, it's looking after your staff. And because of that, it's going to help them get back to work more quickly, uh, which is really, really important, isn't it? Um, but it makes them uh, feel uh, valued. So they'll want to stay with you. They'll be attracted with you. So for me, it's getting helping you attract the right staff. But even more and more importantly, it's helping you retain them. Um, uh, which I think is another way of looking at this side of things. Um, and with all of these things, you can offset it against tax. Well, not all of these, but, but you can still offset this against tax as well. Um, <coughs> maybe one for another day included on that. You know, you've got your life insurance you can put through the business, your income protection. And there's also private medical, I think we'll probably be talking about at another time. So you like said Bupa and WPA and that stuff. All of that is part of a, a benefits package you could put through to your staff. Um, which I think is uh, very valuable nowadays. What, what are your thoughts on that? Have you heard about that before? I I I have not. I I this is this is all news to me. It's interesting. It just it just shows me that you know when it comes to insurance, they've pretty much thought of everything, really, haven't they? You know, they, they've got everything covered, which is great. Yeah, yeah, which is really I think really, so. Really great. And a lot of 
I, and I, I don't obviously it varies from practice to practice, but you could have a dental nurse that's off sick and she may have uh, a month or two of full sick pay. But there's lots out there that will just go straight onto statutory sick pay. Um, and that at the moment is just under £110 a week. So if you imagine you, you're on a good salary uh, and then suddenly you're poorly and your, your, your income drops to £110 a week or, or, or just under that, that's that can have a catastrophic effect to some families. They're looking for that income. So to have something in place that's going to kick in and pay them a big chunk of their salary if they're off sick, that can be a make or break for some people in their families. Um, so I think, you know, it, it's those benefits that they're doing there as well. So it's the peace of mind. It's the financial safety net for you and your staff as well, which that's, I think is really important. That's awesome. OK, and I'm, I'm listening with intent over here. So if there is anything else that you can add on top of that as well, I'm all ears because this is new to me. It's not stuff okay. that I've, I've come across before and I'm keen to learn more. Yeah, well, I suppose the essence of it is, you know, that it can give your employees financial support if they're absent from work long term, either due to illness or injury, as we said. Um, and this money could take some of the added pressures off your employees so they can focus on getting well. So getting back to work more quickly than they otherwise would do. Um, and bearing in mind on that, also, especially with group income protection, it has the rehabilitation services, which is aimed to reduce lengthy absences by providing those interventions that I talked about. And also that you can get with some providers, uh, a manager that help will proactively manage the employee health issues as well. So it's a bit like having a team uh, that you wouldn't have otherwise access to, to help look after your employees and get them back to work. But, you know, we're providing financial support to the, to the employees, you're helping employees get back to fitness and you're then re-engaging the employees with your business as well. It's all part of the service. So as well as showing you care about your employees, it helps the business stand out from the crowd when it comes to recruiting and retaining staff. I think those are the key messages of the group policy. So sort of summarising all of that is dependent on what type of business you have. If you're a sole trader, there's one type of income protection for you. If you're a limited company, uh, there's another option for you. And you can add on other things such as the national insurance and pensions as well. And then if you've got staff that you want to stand out and take care of, you can also put the things like group life insurance, group income protection, put it all through the business, offset it against tax, reduce your corporation tax, look after your employees and looking after your business at the same time. Uh, I think it's, it's a bit of a no brainer for me uh, when it comes to that. And it's, as you said, there's not that many people know about it. I know there's lots of advisors out there that um, because of the authorizations in it, which I don't want to bore everybody with, but um, you can be qualified because I'm a qualified financial advisor. Um, but there may be certain areas that I'm not authorized to give. Um, but there are certain parts of the of, of the industry that aren't authorized to give group advice. So the, so you, you could go and see somebody and they'll talk to you about having a life policy in your own name through the business. But if you've got 20 employees or 10 employees you want to do it for, they wouldn't be able to help where I can do all of that sort of as a one-stop shop. Wow, there was an absolute flipping deluge of information there. I think the thing that stuns me is just how many different types of policies there are. One is almost like a policy that caters to like every single need, even sometimes needs that we don't even know that we have because we've yeah, never absolutely. really been conscious of it necessarily before. If anybody wanted to find out anything more about those policies, Tony, how can yeah. they get in touch with you? Um, they can contact me. I'm, I'm on uh, my website, hammondfinancial.co.uk. They can email email me at tony at hammondfinancial.co.uk or give me a call 07857 I think the point here, James, is that you've seen how complicated it can be. And it's not just something that you can get off the shelf. You need good advice that's bespoke to you and your circumstances. And that's what I love doing and providing that financial safety net. Top stuff. Tony, you've been really generous with your time today. Looking forward to have you on the have you back on the podcast sometime soon. Can't wait. Thanks again for the opportunity. Cheers, James. Thank you.